In the beginning, my mom wasn't very supportive of me because I dropped out of middle school. I've known Nine since 2017 and we've met at a German Dota LAN. I think he wants to prove himself to the world because before Dota he didn't have much in life. We were on the bottom and I asked her to buy me a new computer and I talked her through everything about what this whole esports is, about what I've been trying to achieve. And she actually did end up buying me a new PC and supporting me. And that is why I do really want to win with my friends and family attending. Playing a major in my home country feels very good. I've had tournaments here before, but nothing to this scale. I think Germany is such a historic esports country. Like we had the first TI here, right? So it's so nice to be able to come back and be able to experience this wonderful city. I've had a, such a great time in Berlin so far, and I'm looking forward to spending the rest of this weekend with other Dota fans and enjoying this, uh, this lovely place. The period between Peru and Berlin has been quite busy. I haven't had much breaks. Pretty much during this whole time, we've been playing nonstop, been practicing. And on top of that, there's a complete bomb from Valve drops a new patch, completely changes everything. And it's been quite stressful, but it's, it's nothing that I can't handle. After the Pro Major, we had talks and we had to get our shit together, kind of like find the problems, try to fix them. And I think so far it's been pretty productive. And I hope we keep the momentum and keep the upward strength. So I decided to take a break during gym league because I was feeling very tired, like I needed a mental rest. And I felt like it was more important to be ready for the major and make sure that I am in top condition to play here and felt like it was better for us overall with, and it's more aligned with our goals. You can get it or what? That's good. Yeah. I really like the team. I like Stockholm, but the small pieces are back. <laughs> I don't care about that. You don't until you do, you know? Patch is very fun right now. I'm enjoying my games, my pub games. And it will be very nice, a very fun major, I think, for both viewers and players. You look in the lane, you have a blood grenade and the slow and shit. Yeah, the slow. Like, I played with the blood grenade and the gala. Like, I felt like I could solo kill in here, honestly. Like, I actually can't get away. Before the major, everyone was uh, both excited and worried to play on a new patch because there's a lot of randomness involved. We also didn't really play any scrims with Saxa. New patch, things might be a bit random. We just should try to do our best and try to figure out the patch and just see how it goes, like not to worry too much. How about you kill the f***ing anti-magic? You went for me. Yeah, because I cannot stun him, he's gonna f***ing counter stun. Oh, and I can f***ing push him. You cannot, you cannot counter stun. Did you go to me from the side? Yeah? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Are you sure about that? I feel like you were gonna die the most if not to stun. What are you talking about? I have perma stun. Let's get it. This is three out of three. <laughs> what do you mean? The cool, the cool Stop print? putting Saxa in the back. Cool print, this style is wow, better. Why do you think he put the one who put him in the back? Saxa I, 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 I didn't back. force him to go there. <sighs> what is that? Does that sound like a purpose? White noise. Uh, I think there's actually just a leak. The gas leak. Might <laughs> 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 be. You just don't know. We're thinking... Maybe we just ban the challenge. Like this kill ban sort of the X to be honest. We should at least like experience some APL right this patch before we start banning it. I think going into the first day of group stage, you don't really know on a new patch. Like you sort of have some idea going in and you sort of hope it's right. Maybe you have some like educated guess, but you don't know for sure. Like some team that you play might show you something that your entire idea with the patch was wrong. It's hard to be mega confident when you don't know if you're right or wrong. So another attempt from Spirit's not gonna pay out. Meanwhile, hang on, what the hell is going back here? Lot. 
What just happened? Kindra, oh. take a fight without spirits bodyguards around the lesson. <laughs> Looking to close this one out. Last set of barracks soon to be claimed. Spirit, they're gonna very much struggle. You know it's you know it's a rough game <laughs> when the net worth is almost yeah. the same as the Minimar. What a weird game. I was thinking we should have done something different with our map a bit after they just, but we can watch it. It's not important at all, I think. This game looked pretty smooth from watching. He just doesn't have the damage by himself, and now with the BKB expiring, there is going to be no escape for Skeet up. The rest of the team, they want to fondle the area. Finally, Nine, all right, hang on. Okay. Look at the damage for the Alchemist. Finally, Nine, starting to get the right clicks going. It's collapsed. Forced out to the left side, but the Chi's going to be eaten with the Underlord. A fresh health pool to be able to work with. They're going to hold him in place with the Roar as well, but they're not addressing Lal and Yatoro, so both the cores. They're starting to hit back as Tundra needs to retreat. They're going to delt to split away his Sarks. They'll stop his TP just short. Jeez, are going to get dropped. So our first series of Group B is going to go the way of a tie. Do you think you could have gotten some assassin build that game to just like run around the map and kill the suits and then we just farm the camps after? Because I think it felt kind of weird in the mid game. We just didn't like all three cores are like that, but like no one is ready to kind of go in. What is this? This is a plate. It looks nice. It's a nice place. It is at least a bowl. I feel like they probably think they f*** up this, this last game and I feel like they still like some of these heroes. I feel like they, there's a good chance they like the storm still. Oh, oh god, oh him. god, oh god. Cancel that TP. Oh god, oh god, all of Tundra's <laughs> Oh, they're all through. going, they're Tundra's waiting. Here. Tundra's here. Oh, what a blink. They turn, they get him. The pulverized knife. He's dead. Nine's oh, dead. God. He's out of there. And now... Skinner in the area wanting to do what they can. Can they control where to? They're doing some good damage. The blinding light, the pushback, disarm, but still living. Where's the detection? They get the dust down a second too late, but they still have the damage. Skinner, BKB, nine in on them, and now in trouble. They don't have buyback on where to. And IG, oh God, the nighttime switch. That's so crazy. Forces out the BKB, stun, turn, Requiem out, dodges from one, but now look at him. Skeeter. Oh, but the Hex, the turnaround, and he didn't get the Agonims off. Tries to save himself and keep himself alive and does manage to. And now Emo in the duration of that BKB. Turns his eyes onto Skeeter, tries to find him. BKB still going, but the stun is there. The root, the control, but the Sunder is off in time. Where is the morph? Does he have the damage that he needs? He's chasing nine. Can't find the right hero. And eventually spots him over there, but the rest of his team is dying. Emo, he's in the Terra Blade form, stealing some of that Agi, but still a lot of damage out. Snaking with the stun on two. That Shadow Fiend, and he is going to die. A buyback comes out from Io trying to say PYW, not gonna happen. Triple kill for Skeeter, finds himself another Ultra. You know he wants to go for the Rampage, but instead they're just gonna go for ending the game. As GG is called Tundra, take the series 2-0. Oh, thank you so much. It's <laughs> not the lounge anyway. I just it's only it. good to me, I don't want it. All right, so uh, thank you for inviting me back. It's been awesome, even just today, to watch you, just to see those really important words that I've been sending through to you. Let's think about our situation at Tundra. What a win we had at the end of last year. You're now a team, a group of individuals that other teams are chasing, trying to now beat. Well, that's quite overwhelming as well. Maybe just maybe some of the players didn't quite get that right early in the year, but this is a team effort for all of us involved to make sure that we continue to learn from that experience and we continue to chip away at making sure that through the rest of the year, we get that right. Everybody's beatable. Great teams lose. But you'll be really hard to beat. And that is where you are at Singapore. And I think you're trending that way now. And that's a pretty f exciting situation. That's what's going to separate you and give you your best chance to get back to TI and give yourself your best chance to win TI. And I think you can do that. Why f not? Why f not? Maybe just game even. Let's jump up in a couple seconds for RTZ. BKB still on cooldown though for the moment. Chris gonna try and jump in and give him some breathing room to activate these abilities. RTZ gonna try and turn to deal with the Wraith King as well. Still with the reincarnations on cooldown for the moment. 
They're lacking the detection. Finally going to be able to find some, but it's just taken way too long. Tundra, the damage has been dealt. They have way too big of a net worth lead for Shopify to be able to hit back in this game one. And in the end, Tundra, they're going to take it very cleanly. 26 minute victory from them. So I think obviously this game was really good. Let's stay focused. The lanes, you know, the lanes just went a bit too well, to be honest, this game. It might happen again, it might not, but we just need to make sure we stay focused. I think something that we should keep in mind is I feel like watching this game, everything is going well, but sort of what I heard after is like, we need to make sure that we keep our comms focused and as clear as we can. Because obviously when you're ahead, there's so much you can do, but if we can, it doesn't mean I don't want us to make calls, but we can make these calls while being very calm and clear. It's going to make our game even more fluid. And this is next thing that's a bit harder. It's something we should keep in mind. Crit no TP. He teleported mid. I bet it's going to be able to jump. Whoa, and what a stun from Nine. Sets up for the Static Storm as well. Oh, they're in shambles. Oh, no. What a contest from Tundra. They take everything. It's not going to be easy, I bet. A defensive use of the infest to give him some bonus health. There we go. Second static storm. Sableye stuck inside the field. He's one of the few heroes that have a buyback, but thrones exposed and they're just obliterating the buildings. I think the lesson there is you, there is no way you should be pressing your buyback unless you are absolutely 100% yes, certain. I, thought that we were I feel fire. like the lesson is that we cannot be pushing this middle. Oh. Yeah, that's probably. We should be happy to go to the bottom guys yeah. and like call it a day. Like after, like with the beta that is top, and the chain is farming jungle, I feel like they can literally die we, 10 we, times we, we, we were doing, we were killing them off cooldown. It's just they brought, the, the chain came bottom and killed me. Like, we were doing it. Like, we, they, they, they were feeding off cooldown. Oh, I know, I know the uh, no, 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 I collect no. Can, I, can I get an autograph? No. Please. No. I feel like I'll draw you a coach on it. Couch. Yeah, I can you like, like, autograph. Can you like, like, couch that's under that's my name. Just wait till f***ing Microsoft releases direct storage for Dota. I don't even what? know what this means. <laughs> I don't even know. Why do you know what this means? <laughs> what is happening? You'll see. What? Direct, what? direct storage. What does this Memory storage? No, it's like... It's like some tech they pat like they patented or whatever for word. This is like Microsoft I feel like Oliver yes. doesn't know what it is. He just read about it in the technology newspaper. I, I, like he reads every okay, morning. Okay, I, I like would, memory access is an Intel in pan. No, but uh, it's called direct store. That is the actual name. I mean, I cannot, Skinner doesn't know either. So. I, cannot <laughs> I cannot explain it because I don't, don't know. I, I don't fully understand how it works, but like apparently, like it's supposed to. But do you to, think it will increase your MMR? 100%. <laughs> Actually, 200%. Talon, we were a bit caught guard by the support pudge. Um, especially, I guess, it's good versus the enchanted the hook one shots the creep. Um, me, I was being a little careless, and I I had a few deaths, and that kind of slowed down our early game. And even though our draft was pretty decent, we had difficulty in, in finding points of pressure because their lineup was very good at defensively. So we kind of had to turtle and, and farm our way back into the game and once we acquired enough items and we were able to and levels we were able to very convincingly win team fights. He does it every fight man it feels like another vacuum onto multiple heroes from the dark that was your 24th pick dark here as well who just absolutely obliterated talent through the entirety of this game and but what a performance from Pandra. So I don't know how much damage this techie scepter does, but apparently it's a lot. That's a lot. Raid King's first life gets blown up, and now you might be able to doom it on the second one as well. It's 23. Forced to try and stand strong off the back of the BKB, but the damage it has been dealt easily through the magic immunity. And now Jabs, he's going to be chased down as well. There's no escape for the blood and nor Q as well. A doom used to cancel that. And in the end, I'm going to tell them they lost four. Ooh. So it wasn't just a, a couple of heroes that went down Tundra. What a defense from them. No more abilities to spam now inside these engagements. Tundra, they'll be able to reposition down to the south. Skeeter finds another angle to kill off 23. And with the buybacks lacking, there's going to be no way for Talon to be able to hold out this final push as Tundra once again. Another 2-0 victory for them. They are on quite the streak. They look very tough to beat. And I see them go a lot for after this pressure. They go for their wisdom runes at seven minutes. So we should actually think about killing them on this wizard rune or like being there to take it before them. Into the middle. 
They want to take Snaking out of the equation, but the Enchantress, he's really make all they have to echo for it. And now BZM, he's isolated as well. Yuragi, though, finds an angle in for the Doom. Once again, it's going to be on to nine, but Skeeter, he can protect him. The Stone Cage buying some space, but it's not going to matter. BZM off the back of the buyback. They're just going to clean up the supporting cast. Once again, they'll isolate Skeeter. He's stuck in the fissure. They'll leave him to last. They recognize they can have him completely alone. They don't have to fear about the Medusa with how they've itemized against Skeeter. And now that he's by himself, it is a worthwhile sacrifice from Tiger in the end. And OG, back-to-back -back team fights. They've got the momentum now in this first game. They run into Yuragi. Do they want to doom him? Yep, Yuragi is not going to mess around. Skeeter needs some assistance. The boys are going to start to teep in towards the T2 tower, but his men is getting evaporated. Skeeter, once it's gone, the help will, will soon follow. They're going to be able to get some separation thanks to the four staffs and Tundra. They'll keep him wow. alive beautifully done just at the nick of time. We have pretty good track record against OG historically, even though they have standards now, so that we, we definitely did not fear them and in any way. Damage will be able to bring him down. It looks like that'll be the case. Skeet is gone, but he's got to buy back and he's got to use it instantly. But OG, they can look to get the supporting cast before the Medusa is able to connect to the team as BZM onto the bridge. Recalling. But the use of the recall means that Skeeter is back into the midst of it all. And OG, it's an all-out retreat for them. They've used all of their ultimates. A little throw, but I feel like it was a fun game though. Yeah. It became some epic games. The damage is there from BZM. He lands a pretty good combo with the meatball. Skeeter's going to be in the middle. Crimson again, though, is just mitigating all the damage from the Phantom Lancer. They're going to turn to the easy target into Crypt Tracks. Crystal made him, but it just takes them so long. By the time they get the kill, the supports are still continuing to go down. His OG are feasting right now. I think we were actually kind of slightly outdrafted. We were a little bit caught off guard, and I that was quite memorable for me because I kind of just lost the lane in our early game just by doing these few things. We have currently, but for OG, they're going to be able to end our night with a 1-1 tie. And no, it just like we ended up being bad because I TP died. I, I got the kill, but then like I died. I think the room can be fine. It's just, it's just if I survive, I'll come back bottom for the six, six minute timing. What do you feel like playing today, Sapsa? Not the Carlos. What? It's boring. Yeah, but... Uh, it's boring. Is it actually boring? I feel like it's so fun. It is fun, but... I feel like you should feel like, like you're flying the cereal. No, it, it is. Like, you get so fat and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's very fun. The Berlin major winners, hopefully. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Taxi Taxi? No. Are we? No. What is it? It's like... Not like Transformers, it's like a taxi driver. <laughs> it turns into a Transformer? <laughs> no, no. Transporter, I meant, sorry. Huh? Transporter. I mean. Oh, is, is okay. the stat stayed in the guy? Yeah, Jason but it's not that, that guy. But uh, like, there's like a guy getting into the taxi and he says he needs to be fast and then like the taxi turns into like a <laughs> supercar, you know? Optimus Prime? <laughs> no, like a supercar. Got him with your to my little friend. The extreme gaming one, we kind of tried some new heroes and we changed things up a bit in how we wanted to play like early on. And we felt really good about it. We punished their heroes early on like a lot on the lanes and stuff. We managed to build like a lead very fast. Once we get going and it's like things kind of start snowballing in our direction, it's like we, we are pretty good at closing these games out. Applause indeed. I mean, just tap out now, Extreme, because Tundra's not going to go back and hit the tier two and go for Megas. They're going straight to the tier fours. I mean, I hear them as well, they're so f***ing loud. I mean, I feel like if you hear them yelling, you know they're f***ing going on you somewhere. Yeah. You don't see them. I can't look at anything right now, though. Screaming at each other. Yeah, we did this. Okay, there we go. Here's the comp. Oh, wait, the Dark Prince is going to come in. Uh-oh, problems. A Big lot of problems. problems. A whole heap of problems. Oh, God. They use the Doom onto the Underlord as well. So that means the Omni Knight is free to be able to engage all of his spells here. Goes Extreme to have to be able to reset. Oh, he ate him. GG. That's it. That is it. Going to the Beast Coast series, we were definitely confident. We know these guys like to play aggressive and they like to play active. So we were ready to play the same way. It was definitely one of the more fun series we played this tournament. And yeah. Initial time for the moment, Dark Margo is going to be forced to use all his power charges to reposition. 
rupture out, but it's on the Sarks here. And meanwhile, inside the middle of the five, they've got the lasso. So again, Dark Margo will not be able to escape. It's all on the back of K1 to turn this fight around, but he's getting kited around the tree. Snaking goes. K1 won't have an opportunity to even kill a support as Tundra. Up to a 13,000 net worth lead now. Nine's gonna find an angle. Double lasso, drag back, ski up. Oh, just free food for him to claim. No escaping for Beast Coast. One last attempt's not gonna go their way. Tundra. Man, what a crazy draft, but the fact that they are able to execute it as well to an incredibly high level just showcases how goddamn strong this team is and the form they're in as well is remarkable for Tundra. After we were able to like get two enough items, it felt like our lineup sort of rolled through them both games. And maybe they can go for snaking after this freezing field's proven to be a pretty big oh issue though. God. Snaking to solos down the undying and he'll be able to TP out as well, right in their face and on so He's looking for the finishing blow and he's gonna find it. Burn. He might get to Oh, that was a huge blast. Both the supports on their last final breath able to get the kill, but I mean, Tundra, uh, the support play from them, pretty on point. It's like, dude, I can't even get out of the base, and now Sacred, he can't get out of the base as well. Another shackle from Nine, and of course, they're gonna be able to get more kills. You just revealed the location of Schofield. Easy breezy, it pauses from some of the members. Tundra, and there we go. The G's are going to be dropped. I think that we played the lanes for Beast Coast really well. After we were able to like get to enough items, it felt like our lineup sort of rolled through them. Going into our last phase with SMG, I think we're for sure going to try hard, but we're going to just draft things that we want to test a bit. Kinder, four, 10 year olds. It's kind, kids. Kinder is kids. What, what's a four? Is that like you read? That means like, like for 10 bucks, <laughs> you can, you can uh... eat one children. Oh, I do buy Wi Fi on the plane. Yeah, but you said like, you like it. No, do not be on internet. I feel like Definitely. you are arguing against yourself all the time. Why? You're saying the internet, like buying the, the data is, is a scam, but you buy internet on the plane, which is like 100 times more a scam. I, I mean, just feel I like... Mean, it is a scam. I like the kid of the situation is that he can receive calls. Who the f*** calls you? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> and my girlfriend. <laughs> Who the f*** calls? <laughs> I mean, also, like, I think you're being stupid here. <laughs> like, who the f do you call without internet? I call my parents. I call Anna. I can WhatsApp. also, I can also call people. Yeah. Who I put now? like ten bucks on my car. It lasts like two years. So I feel like I can do everything you can do. I can even connect the internet with the credits. But, but I, just, I just don't pay monthly. I feel like. I need phones. You need to be work. checked out. My wife doesn't work. I don't care. Oh. But the you idea of the other option. The idea of the alchemist. Uh, I wish there was a way to get Wi Fi. Yeah, I want to be that. picked by the great snake. The third? Nice. You guys run it? Then they run it back? Let's go. <laughs> run it and go. You guys play LGD or 9 pandas? Wait, no, it's, no, LGD. it's L LGD or. LGD are you guys then? Oh, it's a three way tiebreaker. Yeah, oh, for the really? for not eliminated. We always thought just it's the first time in major history that an eight and eight team will get eliminated. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Uh, wait, aren't you guys guaranteed first? Yeah, oh, matches are real. Gonna be leading that charge. Half mana. Work it. Put out onto the Ember Spirit Moon, gonna be blown up right away. They do so have weird. a nice soul blind onto two heroes that they need to be able to take out nine first. He had the roll up, defended himself a little bit. I think everything kind of went, went our way, so not many surprises happened, so which kind of ended up in like a very swift 2 0. So this group stage has been very easy. I was coming to this tournament thinking our group is much easier than the other one. And I think it ended up being the truth. But only playoff will show which group was actually stronger. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. We felt good after the group stage. Obviously, we were not really challenged. So we felt really confident, we felt good. We had the choice between Liquid and LGD, and we decided to go with LGD. I think challenging Liquid to break the curse is not a bad idea, but since we are f***ing hungry for DPC points, we should just f***ing take LGD. And deal with Liquid and DPC, you know? I feel like we take it. Yeah. I'm happy taking LGD. What you do you would also be that? sending Liquid into the same side of the bucket as Gladiators. Oh, I mean, now you saw it to me even more. Because Gladiator is usually winning as Liquid, right? And we so it looks like finally Skida agreed with me that we should have picked LGD. No. That's what I heard. That is what I heard. No. That is what I heard.
you give yourselves your best chance to have your best possible performance when you're focused. That's the number one rule here. F for focus, F for flatline. Focus and flatline of emotion. Refuse to be distracted, refuse to tilt. We're the best in the world at doing that. Stay the best in the world at doing that tonight. And just as importantly, a final F, a third F, and that's fun. Love every second of being immersed in the game, of being focused, of being flatlined. Love to play, love to compete, no matter what. Stay focused, stay flatlined, have fun. That's how you guys perform well. That's how you guys give yourselves a great chance to win. That's going to spot the bit of aggression coming in from Tundra. They're going to keep it going anyway. Still manage to find the initiation. Planet Force snaps up to the high ground at the same time. The War Stomp onto the Moira Tech. Gets off the BKB. They use the Ghoul off to their... Oh, jeez. Disarm on Shiro meant no damage during that duel. Throw up the Doom onto the Panko. 33 is going to chase after him. Hit him with another War Stomp and let Skeeter do the deed. They know he has nothing right now. Yeah, they're running out of Force Staffs. They're running out of abilities. That's it. GG. Game one, no contest. Half it is just Tundra all the way. In the first game we won pretty convincingly, it was pretty easy, we were feeling good, the team morale was high, so then going into game two, maybe we're feeling a little bit too much, or maybe it's a few blunders. Helgen needs to save on the Alchemist, they get the stun on and nothing to say, nothing to say, moment up, but he eats the cheese, consumes it, Ice Blast coming into the fountain, PSG LGD, you want to farm some heroes? No, they're going to close out the game, they're going to hit the Ancient. Back into it, nothing to say though. Arrow lands onto the Batrider with the uh, nine controlled up as well. They're just throwing bodies out there, trying to delay the end of the game, but it will not happen. PSG LGD taking this game two and pushing us to a game three. I wouldn't worry too much. We f***ed them early and just it was a naga. Well, obviously, we just need to adjust. We have high priority this time. It was looking good. Yeah, I think we want second pick, right? Good. Yeah. You're, you're think... needed, coach. Oh, this is an opportunity to right hole. here! Ice it's Blast the on top of two! It's looking beautiful! Trying to clean him up with the Ice Blast debuff. Oh, still on him. They've him. gotten two. Is this Sven going to be able to get like away again? He goes, he goes in. He's going after the Bloodseeker. Through huh? the gate. Get through the gate! Get through the gate! He got through. Why you smile and Zeal are on the other side of things, though. Nine is going to pop back in. They actually managed to grab the Sven. in again on in the corner, kiting him around. He, he can't actually do anything. He's satanic. Trying to heal up off of that one, but he's got the control. Planet trying to hide away right next to the gate. Okay, we've got more buybacks coming in from PSG LGD. Uh oh, 33. He hopped through the gate to be able to get nothing to say, but it couldn't zip away in time. He dies, and he doesn't have the buyback. All oh, these heroes are stuck, though, on the wrong side of the gate. This gate, it's destroying them. From the third game, we just decided we want to play a bit more normal lanes, and we ended up winning our lane really hard. It is not the fight that they were looking for. Back in the fountain they go, but Skeeter is farming through all of that one. GG is called. You can lay on the couch. I will. I reserve Dan, back, 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 back corner back. of the computer, of the puddle. Oh. He's taking life to me. Told me, guys. Wait, win or lose, we had a day off? Yeah, told me if did. you win, you will get a day off. I wanted people to earn it. You didn't know. You, you didn't, didn't know. know. No, you I did. Know. Because they just think the right three right losers are going to If you did know, this has happened before. Don't lie to people. I don't know. I just want to encourage my boys. Come out. Are you going? Are you leaving? Good to see you, Dan. Thank you for helping us. You'll get messages. Okay. It was good having you around, as always. Listen to them read them. I right. get to roleplay down again, just like to be honest. <laughs> Sounds good. Down to be honest. You got it. As cliche as it is, I know the Tundra players are simply focused on right now. Right now, this pub, this scrim. Right now, today, this game. They're intelligent. They're not predicting any kind of great success. They're just focused on the process. They know that's all that they can do. Let's see where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make a point, yeah? At the beginning of the day, we felt good. The atmosphere is good. We are laughing. Going into the series against Nine Pandas, we weren't exactly sure what to expect. Like, we have never played them before. Obviously, we know their players and we have some sort of idea of what they draft. Overall, we were feeling confident going into the match. Couch! This is not couch. This is a f***ing turn table. How dare you. This is a chair table, let's go. You get the Doom! Oh! 
He had his arms up, couldn't find the distance, and Nine Sives gonna find his way up to the other side of the cliff, but might turn into a big old fashion team fight as Ramsey jumps in. 33 with the Pit of Malice. Finally, the Doom comes out. Soxa looks to be done for Roger. Getting healed by Antares. They want to keep this Chen alive, apparently. Nether Blast is there. It's a two for nothing. Nine Pandas. The concoction continues, so... Ends up being three kills netted. Yeah, there's still two available. We're going to fight in the mid lane. Skeeter gets off his Wraith Fire Blast, focusing. Oh, Antares able to be saved by his Eon Disc as the Doom is procced onto the Wind Ranger. And that is a nice pickup. It's a dieback for Nine King. Pandas. Absolutely, two supports dead with no return in sight. This game ended very fast to some death push. It was a very stressful ending, and then when the ending just happens from one to another moment, it's not easy to get like into the after game mindset. Heroes still remaining for Tundra. They still have the Aegis. Skeeter finally jumps into the frame. They're just gonna focus down the H, and all they have to do is right click, and that's it. I think like. Two minutes, we can talk about this this last game and then we should probably forget about it. I, I'm trying the whole game to talk about we need to get the chain kids out of bottom. And Skidda just tells me not to panic. We are literally losing packs. I don't have TP, I don't have gate. You no, cannot no. No, no. why the f do you think this whole game revolves around you? When I say we are panicking, Snay is tipping bottom. He's tipping for a the reason! There are twenty skeletons about to hit a TP. I don't, I don't f screaming. I don't why have the f are you screaming. Calm down. Let's go get out of here for yes, a second. Okay. Yes, it's not panic when the Rax is literally Stop above screaming. After the first game, there was some frustration between me and Skidder and a bit Saxa. Some of the ways Skidder was communicating during the game were not, not very good. And that led to a little bit of conflict. Everyone was a bit emotional, obviously, after the loss. Okay, so one thing. I think, you know, this was a very stressful game. I kind of got out of hand. It's whatever. Just need to remind, we're still we're playing for top three right now. Just two wins and we're top three already. Everything is fine, nothing has really changed. And I think the worst thing that we can do is like letting it get out of control right now. We are still in control. Like whatever happened last game, let's just forget about it for now. We can talk about it the whole evening. Just realize we are still in control. I think the main thing is because they want to do so well, sometimes that emotional stability can be lacking. So that's one thing that we've been working hard on become more emotionally stable and that's another important personality characteristic when it comes to learning and competing and engaging in the sport. Now, Mero might even be found. Oh, it's gonna go on top of Skeeter. All right, they have the damage with the Mystic Flare. Nice kill on the position one Naga, but Sox is the real one you gotta worry about. <laughs> Mero, he is tracked up, nowhere to hide. And, and no, has no, no, Nine might get involved again. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that Sox is the one that gets the kill. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Kayotaka, he's gonna pop his BKB, but falls in the end to the Fade Bolt, despite having the BKB. GG's called, I, I can't blame it. This game, this was, I have no words for how bad this stomp was. We sorta just let the Tinker through, which is a hero that almost no team plays, so you don't really have a lot of information on it. You don't really know what to do against it exactly, what are the best picks, what is the best playstyle against it, and it just got out of control. Another casualty for Tundra is they have no answers for this, this Tinker. Now focusing on the barracks, that's gonna be another fortification for Tundra. As you can see, nine pandas, they wanna finish this game now. So they were able to kill the Tinker once. Can they do it again? I feel like without these heroes, they're not able to find the late game scaling that they're so comfortable with. This is something I watched from Rams' interview is like they can always feel like they can win because they have the late game scaling. But if I were to take that away from them, then they would not be so comfortable. Sometimes you just have to learn these lessons the hard way. Double it's kill over. for Kiyotaka. And that should do it. GG's are called. It's all good. My birthday was actually a coincidence that it was also on our match day versus Nine Pandas. Usually, I spend most of my birthdays either in tournaments or maybe at boot camps. In the past month, I haven't been home at all. I have a lot of family in the US, especially grandparents who are a little bit older. These are like moments I'm sacrificing and missing to make my goals work. So obviously, I take these things very seriously because at the end of the day, it is a sacrifice you have to make. All right, I've Learn the trick of cutting this now, guys. All right. Holy. All right, it might not look the best, but. I feel like I'm celebrating now. 
Alright. <laughs> Cannot get any worse than this. Here you go, buddy. Alright. You want, anyone else want a slice? Sure, I'll take one. It's looking good, guys. I hugged the beer for good luck. You don't like wine jumps? I don't know what like is. Gummy beers? Basically. My dad really likes wine gums. He's in the street and... <laughs> Say this word. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Troll? That one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Blue Witchman. <laughs> Yo, Tundra 9! Tundra 9, come here. How do you say this one? Trolli? Sorry, Blue Witchman. Close enough, close enough. Yeah, you try your best. How about that? I feel like I'm sort of close on that one. I think the most important thing is that we keep emotionally level. We make sure that no matter what happens, like we're putting on our best game. It doesn't really matter what's happening in the game. If we don't respond to the pressure, we make our own. We're just going to think about being the best team we can be and we're going to be hard to beat. Part of like creating our own pressure is just talking about play and planning ahead and what we want to do. Let's make sure we respond to people, especially if people are trying to make a plan. We should build on this plan. We should think, does this plan involve me? Am I needed? Blah, blah, blah. And how can I make this plan work? Liquid is a team that I personally want to beat just because they've been beating us so many times now. I, I just want to break their streak and finally have the last life. Back down, you see Rage fades away, and it looks like Mickey. Oh, popping the other the side, trying to go for the neutral tonight. He gets it. Oh, a big clap from Mickey as yes, he dies, but he managed to limit the effect, the positive effect for Tundra. All up here. He's going to come back in. They're gonna go for this one, but so is Mickey. Closing in, we'll be able to finish off the Connell, and they already got the Doom out onto the Brewmaster. That's big. The double BKB duo is gonna be able to push through this song. Skeeter oh, trying to keep his distance from that bear, wait out these BKBs. They still have this Doom. It's only for off. a few more seconds. They need to be able to finish off now. It's a close call, but it looks like they're right. there. 33 gets it off. The Primal Split goes off, and now Liquid are gonna have to fight through that one, or are they gonna get punished? That's gonna be the Aegis down Double first. Now flips on Tundra. Five. Not quite enough. Nine hit by the Stomp. Nine trying to get away from Zai, but he doesn't have any more steps. And dissimulate in one second time. He's gotta be able to juke this one out. Nisha went inside the pit. They don't know. They're gonna so stop Aegis chasing because they need out. to help out. Mickey's been kited around. Mickey's dead. Double buyback pain off for Tundra here as they get back to the fight. That Aegis times out at the wrong instance. He's got the Lotus. But he's still gonna die here without using an Insania. Trying to go for the ZP out. He barely makes it out in time. Tundra striking back. It was a heavy cost though. I feel like a lot of times it was Liquid setting the tempo of that game. But here it felt like it was kind of the, the shoe was on the other foot with Tundra hitting that 20 minute timing and trying to find kills. Liquid. They're finding later game kills, that's for sure. Another two supports picked up. Boxy continuing to get these last hits with the Dagon. He's trying to work towards his Dagon 5. You know, give me all the kills, guys. The first game against Liquid, we were like very passive and we kind of let them farm a lot. They had like some Minus Doom, they had some Mercer Battle Fury. And the game was like very slow and they just kept farming and we didn't really react. We built like Pipe Crimson and we wanted to kind of take fights more, but we didn't get the chance or we didn't force the issue. So yeah, I feel like just strategy-wise, they beat us on that front. It's not like that we got that played too much or something like that, but I feel like they, they were more prepared going to the first game for sure. Remnant into Blast, into All In, but he gets off the BKB first, and, and immediately the AoE Doom still going out from Zai. <laughs> it's absolute destruction. They just wipe out the heroes in that little AoE. You got silence on Mickey. He gets off he the has Ash, so. Wears out eventually. They have the Lotus Sword to be able to help him out here. The Freezing Field is really nice. But the damage is just not quite there. Zai teeping out in the middle of a fight? Okay. Can you punish it? Maybe. It's not looking like it. Mickey may just be a bit too strong. The illusions just get torn through. The Ember and Mickey's Ursa have no problem delivering the AoE damage in game one. What a brutal beatdown. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Tundra got nothing done in that game. We sort of had to find a way to get together and look for kills. Because. As Saxa said, like, these guys are playing super slow. Honestly, they weren't making any moves early. It's just like one mid-pressure and that's all they did. When I'm calling that these four minutes are not that important, I feel like there needs to be heroes coming. Because I knew this was gonna look like that if we don't play for it. 
we ju we'll just make those adjustments and we'll be able to help nine on the road better. I think I should just pick a shit up. Yeah, I'll just take the entrance sign or the bottom or whatever it allows me to have more mobility to win my lane and check the runes. The drop was just really hard for us after the start. I think we all played them on the map. Like, they have this like same lead the entire game, it's not growing. So we shouldn't feel bad at all right now. Both of these teams, people might have suspected we're going to be upper bracket teams, but nope, they both find themselves in the lower bracket. One of them is going to be going home after this series. Liquid taking the first game in convincing fashion. Can they pull it back to 1-1? Mirror. They can, but they're going to have to make some serious adjustments because Liquid just outclassed them entirely. He was not expecting that, the punch back. Oh, and he is low. They can definitely catch up to him. Nisha, he's going to have a little bit of mana to get jumped. Oh, has lightning light, the clips. He clipped him with the Illuminate, but it wasn't enough damage. But at least they'll be able to run down Insania. They're going to spot nine. Nine, blinking, unable to get the Dragon Tail stun, and is going to be blown up at the start, it looks like. And with the silence out onto 33, he couldn't get the jump he was hoping for. Nisha actually jumped him instead. Boxy chasing after him, trying to get the bombs to go for the TP out, but the blast off, it lands first, finishing off the axe. Skier cleaned up the backside here for Liquid, so they're losing decent silencer. They're going to be able to get this Roshan. And maybe they'll get the initiation too. Nine! Oh, we fumbled on that one. In some trouble, pops his BKB. He's trying to go through the portal. No, he's going to be denied immediately. Oh, they're they're stuck on the ramp. Two with the global silence over the top. Maybe they have the Aegis, but maybe it doesn't matter as the heroes are just being blown they up. Got melted, man. That ramp, the clump, Boxy's AOE destroyed them. Taking the first hero down. Ursa starts to work on him, but the damage, it just doesn't match up. Not compared to what the Bloodseeker and the rest of Liquid are able to do to you. Hold down the bear, finish him off, there and GG go. is called Liquid. There's nothing. Well, 2-0 Tundra once again. You guys have gotten much better at handling losses. How have you felt that your journey through this tournament is going to help you towards your next TI? Um, there's not much to say. It just always sucks to lose, and we'll just try to we'll just try to learn from it and improve and not get too down. To summarize the whole tournament, I think we did pretty decently. The whole group stage, you know, we managed to fall short in the playoff, but whatever. All our efforts are going to be aiming towards the next TPC and doing well there as much as possible, and then hopefully in the third major as well. This year, qualifying for TI is like maybe even tougher than last year. And the European competition is like, it's always been tough, but it keeps getting even tougher. So just to qualify for TI from Europe is like, you're already a top three team at TI or something, you know? It's like very hard. We feel good about it and we feel like we can do it still. Obviously, not the result we wanted, but you know, overall, we got some points. Yeah, Played some good games, we did really well in groups. Like, life is not so bad. We shouldn't feel bad about this at all. Yeah, I think it's just important that everyone just takes the time to mentally reset. I think we're just like on a steady upwards progression, especially since Lima. The individual performances in terms of fundamentals have gone a lot better. That means that we've got a pretty good foundation developed. And once we have that foundation, I feel like in this team, it's very easy for us to go into really good form. Every time I see the fans at events, it reminds me like how much you guys empower us to do what we do and you guys make it super cool. I wouldn't wish to do anything else in the world. Sorry for a sort of disappointing tournament result. I wish we could have played more on the main stage here in Berlin, but I think we'll come back stronger. So please continue to support us.